We are, uh, my name is Jason Strutt. And I'm Gabby Hoffman. And we're two people talking about strongman stuff. Yeah. Um, and we call it Strongman. Because it's better. For the ladies. <laughs> For the ladies. Yeah. Um, do we need to discuss our qualifications? I think it's pretty obvious that we're amazing, so we'll just skip that. He's and mostly go... Jack and mostly tan, so together we're highly qualified <sighs> individuals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were thinking about having babies, but we're both already married, so. Oops. We're just going to do what we're going to do. We're going to talk about axles instead. Today we're going to do axles, yeah. Um, I think the first thing we'll do is actually kind of, we'll zoom in on the axle and we'll talk about the specifics of what makes it different from regular barbell and how that's going to change your uh, technique approach to actually cleaning it. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what makes an axle special. So clearly it is different than a barbell, right? Uh, the main difference here is that it is extremely thin. Usually you're looking at two in inches in diameter. I have very tiny little baby hands, like I actually wear toddler size gloves. <laughs> so I cannot wrap my full arm or wrist around the axle. My middle finger and thumb will just barely touch. So yeah, I got no. The idea of doing like a hook grip or something like that is totally out. So also the axle is usually hollow. So it does feel a little bit different than a barbell and it does not spin quite so nicely. Yeah. So when you're talking about sort of doing a heavy clean and press event, you are most likely going to be using an alternating grip, which is what makes the continental clean and the axle sort of so very unique when it comes to straw man. If you're doing a clean and press for reps, uh, it might be light enough to where you could try a couple different things, but if you're doing a one rep max, uh, yeah. Gabby's totally right, you're probably going to have to do an alternating grip. Uh, it's probably going to be thumbless, uh, just because it's so awkward trying to get your thumb around it. So that's kind of, that alternating grip setup is a given. In which case, you're not going to be able to rack it like a normal clean would. So usually when we think of the continental clean, kind of the hallmark is a transition that occurs sort of on your stomach. And that is mostly to, number one, not snap your wrists off, which is pretty important. And number two, uh, flip your grip so you can go into that nice rack position and press it in a myriad of ways which we will cover later. Yeah. The, the wrist thing, basically, if this doesn't spin and you rotate the bar, the weights have momentum now and they want to continue to rotate, but of course you've stopped it, they're going to continue to go back and it's either going to pop you in the throat Not or, or it's going to crank on your wrists until, until they break. So, yeah. okay, next part, uh, actually doing continental cleans, right? Right. right. So uh, we're also going to talk about kind of like gearing up. So I'm mostly geared up, so we're starting from the <laughs> bottom up. Um, I'm wearing weightlifting shoes. I wear weightlifting shoes for any pressing event because that is my preference. Uh, we kind of went over that in our gear video, which you can check out, um, sort of the merits of that. Uh, I also usually wear uh, knee sleeves. Um, and then we've also got sort of a variety of belt situations. So I use primarily a soft belt when I do axle events uh, because there is, sort of, for me, less bruising. One of the things about Strongman is you usually wear your buckle to the back and you cannot rest the implement on your belt. So a Velcro belt is kind of nice because you can just spin it around. Um, if you are a lightweight competitor or somebody who just has a low body fat percentage, you're not going to get much of a shelf with without a belt really. So I actually usually just kind of like crank it down and pull all of my gut up above it to create some sort of shelf for me to rest on. So I do prefer the soft, soft belt for a lot less bruising. Um, a hard belt does sort of bother me a little bit. I also have a very short tor torso so I can't wear it much lower than where it was placed before. Put on your hard belt for that. Put it on backwards. So hard belt, again lever belt, nice thing. You can put it on backwards by yourself. There's a couple of rules regarding belts. The first one is typically you're not allowed to rest the axle actually on the belt. Um, a lot of judges are pretty forgiving about that. You will see athletes really kind of utilize the belt uh, technically against the rules. However, that is technically the rule. The other thing is usually you can't have the buckle in the front. And that's to protect the equipment a lot of times, just from getting scratched up by metal buckles. And also to add even more purchase to the belt as a shelf that you can rest the implement on. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's let's actually hit uh, a couple kind of notes. Okay. All right. 
So the setup should basically look like a typical clean. Uh, I think one difference obviously is gonna be the grip. Um, <clears throat> Gabby actually sets down very low, like a good Olympic lifter. I actually set up a little higher in a more of a deadlift, deadlift position just because it's where I'm stronger. Go ahead and hit it, Gabby. Go to the transition position and stay there. All right, so this is the transition position. If you do this correctly, you should be able to hang out here. You're gonna notice um, that Gabby's got a little backward lean placing the bar directly over the middle of the foot where she's in balance. Her elbows will stay high over the bar as long as possible, but she's got to pull back too to maintain this position. Go ahead, Alex. More clean. <laughs> All right. So let's focus on the second part. Going from your little shelf here to the actual rack. You want to do it again? Yeah. All right. So we're going to pause for a second on the shelf, and then we're going to go to the real rack. All right, she's on the shelf. She's got to switch her hands so that she can actually rack, and then she's going to do a little second pop. This is almost like, I would compare it to like a power jerk. She's got a little dip, a little dip and drive to float the axle off the body, and then she's got to re-dip to make the catch a little easier. Uh, you don't really have to move the bar very far if you're willing to use a lot of leg drive to pop it up and a little bit of re-dip to get back down. Um, so again, you don't have to travel very far, you just need to move around the axle a little bit. And if you're quick, um, it's not that hard. Um, and that's important, on a one rep max attempt, you're talking about a very awkward movement with very heavy weight. You want to make it as easy as possible. Once you're in the rack position, then you go overhead, right? Yes. Um, there's a lot of different strategies out there, but in the Olympic lifting world, no one's trying to push press. Um, for like yeah. Olympic medals and partially that's because that's against the rules in the IWF um, But the other thing is is like everybody understands knows that like a split jerk or even a squat jerk is gonna be the Easiest way to get the heaviest weight up uh, In strongman the, there's not as much of an emphasis on that split jerk technique and you definitely don't see a lot of squat jerks um, But those techniques are highly effective more efficient in getting heavier weights locked out overhead in a one rep max event, I think it's really important that you get comfortable with the split jerk. For uh, max reps in 60 seconds, it may be a little less important, but if you're competing with heavy weights, at some point or another, it's gonna get too heavy to just constantly go for 60 seconds with a, a more simple technique, like the power jerk or the push press. But we're gonna go over all of them. Yep. Uh, you wanna do them or should I? Sure, I can do those. All right. This is Gabby's like uh, one rep max, uh, so. Let's it go. is not. <laughs> All right, from the rack here, we're going to talk about the push press first, right? Uh, you want your elbows under the bar or a little bit out front. So Gabby's racking more out front just to get more shelf here on the, on the rack and to be able to leg drive more effectively. All right, get your face out of the way, dip and drive, and throw that bar and keep pressing straight through, okay? You don't want it to slow down. Show them another one. So one last time with the push press, dip, drive, straight up. Okay, so power jerk. All right, it's my turn. Okay. Bad for your teeth or something. No, so for the power jerk, you're still doing basically the same thing. You're just going to re-dip. Um, this is going to take a little less time to get to a lockout, at least uh, for the elbows. And then it's going to take a little less distance travel to lock out. All right. So I'm not done until I've got my knees fully extended, hips fully extended, arms locked out overhead like this, and I get my down command. But it's still a very quick technique, even with a little bit of foot movement. Not that much slower than the push press. The final lift is gonna be the split jerk. I'm gonna start off everything the same way, but now I'm moving my feet forward and back and left to right, split my feet into a deeper lunge that gets my body lower faster. Right? Again, not done until I actually recover, but because I don't have to lift the bar as high as the power jerk, I'm going to get a heavier weight locked out of the As you can see, shuffling my feet is going to take a little time. So there, there are folks out there that think that, uh, the thing that the split jerk is slower, and that's why you shouldn't do it. Um, again, if you're filling the full 60 seconds with constant action, if you're getting 20, yeah. 30 reps, um, then yeah, they're right. You shouldn't be split jerking. Um, that's also not strong, man. That's, that's fast man. Yeah, that's probably that's, cro fast, man. that's CrossFit. Yeah. Um, if you're literally doing anything more than like 10 or 15 reps, it is just too light. It is. And that will happen sometimes at like a novice contest. Stop being a novice. Thank you. It'll be all right. All right. So Gabby, Gabby's shelf is not as impressive as mine. Sorry. 
Um, everybody's anatomy is going to be a little different. We're going to talk about boobies in a minute. Um, but right now, we're going to talk about abdominals. I can push mine out pretty damn good and create an actual shelf right here at my diaphragm where my rib cage meets my abs. My abs stick out further than my rib cage. I can exaggerate that like she was hinting at with the belt. So, let's see if I can do this from the side. So, I might normally set up for an overhead pressing movement right through the middle. And what I'm going to do on an axle clean and jerk type of thing, is I'm going to set my belt to the back. And I'm going to set up right there like I normally would. And then I'm going to push this down a little bit. And you can see, like, I create this extra soft tissue above the belt that makes that uh, ridge that much more exaggerated. So I've got a good place that I can stick the bar and then there's a little indentation here where it will actually stay. If you are short-waisted, so for example, my top of my iliac crest is here, my bottom rib is about here. I have the shortest waist pretty much ever recorded in history. I don't have the luxury of sort of being able to push the belt down to create that shelf. I have to actually like bring my gut up and over the belt. So there's gonna be a couple of different techniques to help kind of create that shelf, particularly if you are um, somebody who is sort of leaner through the midsection or very short-waisted. All right, so here's another angle on all of these techniques. Again, we've got the alternating grip, we've got the clean setup to the little shelf here. She's switched her hands. She's in the rack. And our three presses. We got the push press. We got the power jerk. And split jerk. Beautiful. Alright, let's take one second look at one other thing, and that's the hands. Uh, we kind of skimmed over this. Uh, traditionally, if you have an alternating grip, you're going to wind up hitting that shelf position with the alternating grip. Why don't you freeze with one of those sure. like, alternating grip hooks? Right. This is the hardest, she's resting on the bell here. This is, the, <laughs> this is the hardest part about doing the Continental, is trying to switch your hands right now. Switch your hands right now. Eh. Like it's like a whole extra step. And then you rack it. Alright, what a pain in the ass. This is like one of those awesome infomercials where you're like, oh it's so frustrating. Oh, now I have a potato peeler that fixes all your problems. Alright, so. Our potato peeler <laughs> is, we're gonna switch the hands on that top. When the bar is weightless anyway, and you're really not gripping it, that it's not that important anyway. Uh, so she switches her grip right there. She just eliminates one step, all right? Show them one more time in slow-mo. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding, just, just show them one more time. Okay. All right, so she's gonna switch her hands while the bar is in the pot. All right, beautiful. And basically all that's doing is just saving that really awkward step of trying to alternate the hands like while the bar remains resting on the shelf, um, which is really hard. And what you'll see is as you let go, the bar slides down. You're losing ground. If it's a one rep max, you're probably going to lose the lift if the bar slides down. If it's a multi rep thing, you're just losing time and energy and you're getting fatigued like watching the bar slide down your chest. So. We came up with this to kind of skip a step and go a little faster with clean and press for reps or like, um, and what we discovered is, is it works just fine on a one rep max. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter how heavy it is, you can probably still do it. And so it just makes life a lot easier. Yep. Um, just a really quick, easy time. Yeah. All right. So ladies, you have a couple of additional considerations when talking about the axle. I see what you did. Continental right? clean. I know, right? Good seg segue. I'm learning a from couple. you. A couple. <laughs> you know. So um, one of the things that I hear most often is that girls sort of have a problem with resting the axle on their boobs. I think this is 90% remedied by just having better technique, particularly on the transition. So, sort of tip number one um, is don't bend over and try to lap it like this. Number one, it's just not gonna work. And number two, you need to have the bar high enough and sort of be leaned back enough to create a nice path for you to come and re-rack that bar. Okay. Also, utilizing that dip and drive that Jason and I were talking about earlier is really, really crucial, particularly if you are large chested. So, having nice lean back, and then really being aggressive on popping that bar up, and then also not being afraid to sort of move under it like a traditional power clean. 
will save you from essentially hitting yourself in the tits every time you have to clean, uh, which is very, very uncomfortable. Gabby and I are going to go over some, uh, some training considerations for the Axle Cleaner Press. Again, I guess we've already kind of alluded to the fact that there's really two events that you need to worry about. One would be a one rep max event where uh, typically it's Wessel's rule. You know, they auction the bar that goes up progressively and you try to lift the heaviest weight possible. It's pretty much a one rep max thing, like a weightlifting or powerlifting meet. The other is... The clean and press for reps. There are a couple of variations on this. There is sort of clean and press away where you just have to get your down command and come back down. Um, and then there is a clean and press every rep where you do need to re-clean the bar every single time. Now that's a little bit more exhausting than the clean and press away. Uh, but some people, like me, uh, really love clean, so that's not a big deal. Yeah, so how you train for these two is going to be a little different. Your one rep max stuff, obviously strength and power is, is going to be king. So like mm -hmm. knowing, how, um, knowing how to train intelligently for strength work is important. Most of your time there is probably going to be spent very low repetitions, like yep. one to three, um, long rest periods that allow you to recover fully, and heavy weights, you know, 70 to 90% most of the time, um, maybe a little bit on the higher end. Um, and again, utilizing the most efficient technique, so probably focusing on the split jerk, possibly the power jerk. Um, there's definitely people that are uh, bad at the clean, so they may never really get the chance to show off uh, a heavy jerk, and so those guys are often power jerkers. Right. Um, and uh, kind of ha being comfortable with a push press, a power jerk, and a split jerk is uh, important even in a clean and press away event uh, because you just have more tools in your tool toolbox. If you can keep going by doing a split jerk when the other guy stops because they can't do anything but power jerk and not lock it out, uh, you are going to win. So kind of advantageous to get good at all those things, but then kind of pick the technique that you use for your one rep max stuff and that you're most comfortable with. Um, for, I think both of us, that's a split jerk. I actually like to split jerk um, for clean and press away events too because my power jerk just sucks. So yeah. I'm just much more consistent. Realistically, I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, uh, female trainees when they first start, much stronger in the lower body than, the upper, than they are in the upper body. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, is they're probably gonna excel at doing something like the split jerk and they're gonna be very limited by trying to do like a push press. Right. Uh, which re relies more on just brute strength of the upper body, especially the arms. Yes. Okay, how to train for this uh, clean and press away is more probably about energy system development, time management. Mm -hmm. um, there's really uh, only a couple places that you can rest. You can drop the ball on the floor, uh, and just not, you know, and just take a breather there. You can leave the bar in the rack or you can lock the bar out overhead. Um, and so if you're gonna fill 60 seconds, one of the first things that you wanna get good at is filling 60 seconds. Yes. One of the first things that our, our athletes do here um, at Full Circle is just learn how to fill the clock. So we'll do a jerk and we'll hold the, the, the axle locked out overhead. And like if we're expecting them to do 10 jerks, then they gotta do one jerk every six seconds. And they'll lock it out and they'll count in their heads. Three, two, one, drop it, do it again. So they actually learn how to fill the minute. And then once you get good at filling the minute, we get, you know, we get heavier, we get faster, what have you. Um, so if you're gonna do a clean and press away event, you know, you need to clean it most of the time that you're training, but you could clean once and jerk any number of times, you know, and it could be a couple reps or it could be to fill 60 seconds, but you need to practice in that manner on the, on the regular. Energy system like development and sort of fatigue management is probably gonna be crucial when it comes to actual contest time. Yes, and if you're doing a clean and press every rep event, you definitely want to practice that component of it Clean where you are cleaning and, press. and pressing every, every single time. Uh, because while it sounds like, oh hey, it's not that different, it's really different. Uh, it is a much more exhausting to clean and press every rep than just press away, I think. But uh, you do want to practice that. Also, you need to practice sort of getting efficient on your clean and your transition um, from ground back to doing hopefully a successful rep.